question. Okay, if um, it's conceivable that there has been plenty of alien civilizations intelligent enough to reach a stage at which they are able to build artifacts, um, do you think, and if there's relatively benignly behaved alien races out there, do you think that there could be a chance that some races would not face a major challenge in this species of dominant um, stumbling block towards architecture? That's a tough one. So uh, some bonobo type civilization reaching human level intelligence. Uh, for, for those of you who don't know what bonobo, bonobo is a particular species of ape and they're, they're noted for their, how can I put it, calmness, friendliness. They're, they're not an aggressive species of ape. So if they reached human level intelligence and then started building artifacts, would, would they feel threatened? I mean, isn't a threat a kind of aggressive it's a product of, a, of an aggressive type psychology that, that we humans have. <sighs> That's a tough one. Um, it, it's hard to imagine any species intelligent enough to be at human levels not to come to the conclusion that if the artifacts get built and they're vastly superior to human beings, to, to, to such a point they don't give a damn about the species, the species, the parent species, the species that built them, then it's hard to imagine that they would not feel threatened. That, that, that's, that's how I see it. I, I see it almost inherent in the logic. But do you I see mean, any, like any species has to survive, right? I mean, it's, it's you've seen evolved. a balance in humans, like doing um, some, like, uh, some polls, you've seen a balance between those who are Terran oriented and those who are Cosmos now, do you think it would be the same balance? I mean, maybe some bonobos might be hyper-aggressive, but most of the population of the bonobo intelligent version, that is, would be um, calm about it and just see it as a natural sort of progression, not see it as a separate technology. Or who knows what they think, but they don't see it as much as a threat as something but like a, like a hyper-aggressive chimp like species. But would, would that be... A so if they've relaxed about it and not see it as a threat, isn't that a kind of blindness? They're not, they're not facing up to a very real issue that... that you know, it, it, it seems to me there's a lot of common sense in, in the famous slogan of you know, human, human politicians, hope for the best and prepare for the worst. It, it, it makes so much sense. If, if, if there's so much at stake, you, you're just not going to take the risk of, of worst case scenario. So you'll, you'll plan for that. It seems to me any, even mild mannered species, if, it, if they're intelligent, you know, they have at least human level intelligence, they, inevitably I think they, they would have to consider the risk if these artifacts got built. And, and presumably they'd be in the same situation as us. To, to, to build something smarter than yourself? How do you do that? Isn't that a, like a logical contradiction? How, how, how on earth do you build something that's smarter than yourself if, if you have to design it? Well, the answer is you don't design it be, be, because it's impossible, right? To, to design something smarter than yourself would require a level of intelligence that you just don't have, right? But you can build it by... by you know, evolutionary engineering, you just, just randomly change things and observe the results and if, if they're... Surely you can divide and conquer smaller problems that maybe as an aggregate would form a smarter, smarter organism. Oh, partly. And, to, and divide the, the responsibility over the large sums of... Partly, but then if, if you're going to design how those parts get put together... You I agree with the evolutionary yeah, yeah. yeah, I really think evolution engineering is going to play a major role in, in the creation of the artifact. I, I, you know, I don't see a way around that. And so if that's true, then these, these other creatures and the bonobo people, whatever, they, they'd be in a similar situation, I think. How, and, and, and hence they too would you know, be confronted with the same risk 
that, that these athletes that they create may eventually become so superior to them that they just ignore these inferior creatures or, or, or become actively hostile. Hmm. So I, 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 don't, I don't see how you could avoid that. It seems to me say that, like, inherent in the logic of the situation. Okay, so it's an inherent, it's actually a completely, you could deduct the logic um, and it's not based on our physiology or our hyper-aggressive tendencies. The species dominance argument is a, Unavoidable, a completely logical... Yeah, that's, that, well, that's my feeling. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, I may be wrong. Someone may come up with a good counter-argument, but I haven't thought of it. species that is like um, in a sense stopping progression at a certain stage especially with, in terms of uh, developing intelligent autonomous agents sort of like um, the Amish of in, 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 in the scientific and technological world do you think that that is just as strong as allowing for further technology to change the body, change the mind, change the way we are, as the cosmos... When you say as powerful, do you measure that by, you know, how inevitable is it that one side will win rather than the other? Is that, how are you going to measure that? But, well, that depends on who you think that. Mm -hmm. For me, um, it's not necessarily about the See, side of the win. I think it's more like about the... Well, how do you measure power? ...progressive progression of goals. Like, um, okay, what would be most likely uh, beneficial to us as thinking beings, not necessarily human beings, not necessarily just as a, like a distinct human organism, but just generally to consciousness or to uh, sentience or to, you know, that sort of part of us which is aware. Can react several ways, I guess. Um, if if the mix were let's say ninety ten, let, let's say imagine ninety percent of humanity chooses Terran, then they could wipe out the ten percent and you know, the other ninety percent survive, or the other way. Imagine. People are absolutely inspired by the vision of cosmism. You know, choose choose that. So it's so it's the other way. So then let's say the cosmists win and do their stuff, and the athletes get created and so forth. But the tragedy of the situation is, it seems empirically, you know, just by asking people's opinion, it seems it's more or less fifty-fifty, which is the worst. Wait, I mean, it's just terrible. Do you see any trends, though? Do you see, like, the younger generation accepting technology more or becoming more, maybe, conservative about technology? That's a good question. And, 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 and that's an empirical question. That's, that's a question for the sociologists and the psychologists. And uh, there's lots of, lots of scope here for, you know, PhD projects going out into the street and, you know, just, you know, once, once the general educational level of this problem once once it's sufficiently high you know most people then then you can imagine opinion polls uh, you know across the planet and it would be interesting to measure yeah. how the Luddite movement how, you know around that particular enclosed area right. let's just say it was a closed system um, where that sort of Luddite um, movement happened how much percentage of the people were against the technology and how much percentage of the people mm. were for the technology. And the technology won anyway. So. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. But there wasn't and enough, they weren't trying to run nuclear weapons. So, I mean, <laughs> speaking, speaking generally, I... They didn't destroy those sewing machines or loom machines yeah, yeah, yeah. with, like, uh, I tried. atomic yeah, I tried. technology. Yeah, just, yeah. The cards were stacked against them. 
So, um, the, one of the things I've been trying to do over the years is, is try to attract the attention of non-techies, non-AI types. Because today, even today, after, well, how long has this issue been around? I mean, I think the first writings on, on the species date from, well, it's debatable, 60s maybe? I.J. Good was one of the earliest, earliest types, and then, and then uh, 80s, a few more. You know, just the, the, the odd intellectual crying in the wilderness, yeah, so, so, so to speak. And then you know it's 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 gradually heating up, and more and more people getting involved. Exponential. So, you know, as as the media finally as the media gets involved, then uh, you know then then the masses. You know, once it gets into the radio, and television, and newspapers, and blogs, and the internet, and everything. So so that millions and billions of people become conscious of the issue. Then then there's lots of scope then for the, so, the social science people. To, to take their surveys and, and you know, try and empirically answer you know, questions like that. Now, uh, another perspective, more global, um, how, I mean, imagine post artelect war. I mean, you know, go a, f a century or two or three. How, how ultimately will all this play out? Well, uh, I mean, you, you can do a kind of flow chart, you know, decision chart. Yes, it happens. No, it doesn't. Then if, then if. You can have all the decision type diagram. So let's say, take one scenario where the, the cosmos win. Well, they just do their thing. They just make the artifacts. Right? So, 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 yeah. so the humans just you know, have no clue what's going on because they're too stupid. So the artelects get built, and God knows what happens after that, right? And then, then it's up to the artelects. The humans end up getting turned into batteries. So <sighs> whatever, <laughs> yeah, what, what, whatever, the, whatever the artelects want, right? We, we, we just have no say in the matter. We just, just not. Mm. Right. And on the other hand, what happens if the Terrans win? I mean, there's this terrible war, and just utter extermination of any, you know, the, the greatest witch hunt ever. So anyone even thinking? I mean, ima imagine you, you say, well, I read some guy in, in the Nazi time, some German guy, looking at uh, the treatment of the Jews, and he just mentioned publicly, uh, within earshot of, of, of Nazis, he, he just said in German, Kultur Schande, shame of the culture. Yeah, this, this is this shameful act which reflects very negatively on the culture. Of the, of the Nazis? Yeah, yeah, of German, German Nazi culture. And some Nazi heard him, and that guy, whoop, concentration came. Right? So I can imagine something similar happening at the hands of the Terrans. The Terrans are now the new Nazis, in a sense. Anyone expressing even the slightest inclination, positive inclination towards cosmism, is seen as an enemy, as a major threat. So a sort of McCarthyism plus plus, right? Far worse. So it, it just wouldn't be tolerated. It's just so threatening. I mean, what's the threat? Well, yeah, <laughs> that they do get built. And I can imagine the Terrans being even more paranoid because they could argue that, uh, you know, ask yourself, how many guys would you need to build an artelect, given, given the knowledge was there on how to do it? 